Um, I'd like to recognize Mr. Mooney. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Smith, and all my colleagues. As I look around, you may not realize we got so many states represented here. California, I mean, it, it, the South. Uh, our schedule in Congress is generally work, we work a vote four days out of five, three weeks out of four. And today's the first day we would vote on a Monday at 6.30 p.m. We have votes tonight. So what everybody here has done is come in a day early. They have to bus at 7 a.m. to come from D.C. to here to have this hearing with us. And then they're going to take the bus right back to D.C. and vote tonight. So I really appreciate the effort this committee made. It's, it's quite unique. I don't know that I've come to a field hearing before. So uh, it's really an honor to be with you. Um, I live in Jefferson County with my wife and three kids, Charlestown. Uh, it's about an hour, for, for my colleagues, it's a little less than two hours north of here. And I can actually get to D.C. in 70 miles from my home in Charlestown to, uh, to Congress. But welcome to the Ways and Means Committee, the powerful Ways and Means Committee here to Grant County, West Virginia. I thank you for the opportunity to join today's hearing and allow me to, to contribute to this important conversation. I'm grateful that the hearing's in my district, and I hope today's discussion focuses on issues in rural America that Washington often overlooks. West Virginia families are being forced to make tough, tough economic decisions according to the Congressional Budget Office, which is the standard we all use to look at the, the numbers in D.C. and the spending. Inflation, the price of consumer goods has risen inflation 13.9% in just the last two years since President Biden took office. The price of gas, groceries, and utilities remain high, and the value of hardworking West Virginian paychecks are decreasing due to inflation. The cost of living skyrocketing, turning on the lights, heating your home, buying groceries for the week are now difficult choices that my constituents have to make. So helping small businesses get off the ground and expand is another challenge I hear when I travel the 27 beautiful counties in the congressional district I represent, the northern half of the state. You have your entire state delegation here, Carol Miller and I, the two congressmen uh, from West Virginia. And I listen to the feedback. It's so important we hear your feedback when we go to Washington so that we know exactly what to focus on. I actually went and toured Grant County Hospital this morning before I came here, and transportation's an issue there. Because unlike big cities, to get to and from a hospital or to another hospital, it's often two hours. Whereas in a big city, it might be two miles. Those are different challenges that we have in rural America. Um, I, have, I normally serve on the Financial Services Committee, and we just passed my bill last week, a bipartisan bill called Expanding Access to Capital for Rural Job Creators Act, and that simply would survey the problems and challenges, the unique challenges, frankly, that small businesses have in rural areas when facing, when, when they're attempting to get capital to expand their business. I'm glad the House passed it uh, unanimously, and it'll make it easier to navigate the needs and the bureaucracy that small business have to deal with. You see, here in West Virginia, we don't have any big cities. For eight years, I represented Kanawha County, Charleston, and I now represent uh, Morgantown. We don't even have a city with more than 50,000 people in West Virginia. Okay, this is a rural state. Um, we have challenges. Internet access is a big challenge everywhere I, I go, with the exception of Hardy County, where HardyNet does a great job with internet. But, uh, you know, internet access is a challenge. Uh, transportation. The weather is often a challenge, but we do have is hardworking taxpayers here in West Virginia, and we have great natural resources, coal and this beautiful wood you see around here. We have plenty of that. We can cut it down, plant it, cut it down again, plant it, cut it down again. We have great forests. We need, we need for our state to be successful to harness our natural resources and not allow the federal government to get in the way of that, as they often do. West Virginia's small business owners create jobs, okay? That's what businesses do. These are job-creating businesses. You have hundreds of employees here uh, that create good-paying jobs for West Virginians. Rural job creators face, face these difficulties obtaining loans, um, you know, workforce issues, inflation, and regulatory challenges. There is much more that can be done, and I think that this committee will come away with valuable information from our witnesses here today. We can take that back to Washington, D.C., work together to chart the best path forward for a more prosperous America.